granny flat, casita, accessory dwelling unit, laneway house, in-law suite, whatever you call it, we are going to define it for you today, talk about things that you need to be on the lookout for if you're interested in this, and talk about how to finance these projects. Let's dive in. What is an accessory dwelling unit? An accessory dwelling unit is an accessory home to the primary, which means it needs to be built on a property that already has a single family home or some kind of residential structure. Uh, an ADU has its own entrance, so you can't enter it through going through the main house, for example. Uh, it has its own kitchen, its own bathroom, and its own living space. It's essentially its own self-contained housing unit on the property. Now, in most of the country, you must build an accessory dwelling unit on a parcel that's zoned single family. California is the only state that I know of, that I know of as of 2022, that allows accessory dwelling units to be added to multifamily zoned parcels. So this gets into what should you look for for your particular parcel if you're interested in adding an ADO. Accessory dwelling units by and large are regulated by local jurisdictions. And so the jurisdictions in Denver, Colorado are gonna be different than what's in Los Angeles, California, for example. But here are some regulations that you can look out for no matter what part of the country you're in that's gonna help you understand if the parcel that you're on or the, the property you're thinking about purchasing has good ADU potential. So first you have to pay attention to the underlying zoning code. So our zoning code tells us what we're able to build and where. It's the reason why a Walmart isn't in the middle of a residential neighborhood because in the middle of your residential neighborhood, it's not zoned commercial. So first you wanna make sure that whatever parcel you own or you're thinking about purchases, purchasing is zoned for an accessory dwelling unit and that you're able to put one on. So that's number one. Number two, some of the regulations that we see across the country that are overly restrictive for ADUs are owner occupancy. So if you look up and you see that owner occupancy is required for your accessory dwelling unit, that's really unfortunate because it means that you either have to live in the accessory dwelling unit or live in the primary home and that you can't rent both out simultaneously. Other restrictions that we see that are overly restrictive have to, usually have to do with parking or development and impact fees. So parking restrictions, um, you know, some of them can be extremely outdated, like you have to add you know, multiple parking spaces or the ordinance might mandate where you have to put parking within your lot. Um, and some of these can make it really challenging to actually be able to build sufficient parking for your ADO. Um, in a lot of California, these kind of old school restrictions have been outlawed, um, but in other parts of the country, we still see that quite regularly. I also referenced fees. This is another way that cities and local planning departments used to basically constrict the number of ADUs being built while still saying, hey, these are totally legal. And they would do it by imposing really hefty development and impact fees or permit fees for ADUs. So believe it or not, before some of the legislation went into effect in California, we would see certain jurisdictions that could charge 30 or $40,000 in development and impact fees. This is obviously a deal breaker for most projects. Luckily, the tides have really turned, not just in California, but all across the country, where now these big major cities and states are seeing ADUs as a great way to address the affordable housing crisis. And we've seen a complete 180 in terms of regulations at the local, state, and even federal level. So, you know, this is all in your favor right now. ADUs come in all shapes and sizes. We've helped homeowners with projects as small as 150 square feet, all the way to 1200 square foot ADUs with a wraparound deck and its own attached garage. I mean, it's basically a house at that point. But the types of ADUs are varied. Uh, there are garage conversions. You can build above the garage. Uh, you can convert part of your existing house, your attic or your basement into an ADU. You can build an ADU that's attached to your main house or you can build a detached ADU in the backyard. Um, and then within all of that, the size limitations vary depending on what type of ADU you're wanting to build, what the specifications for your lot are, et cetera. The ADUs that we see most frequently are detached ADUs in the backyard and garage conversions. A garage conversion by and far is the cheapest, most economic and fastest way to get a second rentable unit on your property. 
If you're interested in ADUs, visit maxwellspace.com. We are literally the center of the ADU universe. You can check out tons of ADU home tours, download case studies. We've got uh, different price point comparisons so you can see what the costs are in your particular neighborhood. And as always, please like and subscribe this video.